Welcome to the Brain and Spine Neurosurgical Institute. Our goal at BSNI is fairly simple. We want you to have a thorough understanding of your condition. Patients often leave their doctor's office confused and with many questions. We want you to have an effective knowledge of your diagnosis and your course of treatment so that together we can work as a team to address your concerns. Today, we are going to discuss the posterior lumbar interbody fusion, or more simply, the PLIF. Our visit starts with a thorough examination. Patients often present with pain, radiating down from their back out into their legs. This pain is often due to the compression of a nerve. Often, we can identify the source of this pain by looking at an MRI. Let us review some basic anatomy. The spine is made up of a group of vertebrae, or small bones, stacked one on top of the other. These vertebrae are separated by cartilage, a spongy material that provides cushioning between the bones. In this particular picture, the vertebrae are brown and the cartilage is white. The vertebrae surround and protect the spinal cord, which is seen in yellow in this picture. The spinal cord, which is made up of a collection of nerves, is encased in cerebrospinal fluid. This acts as another layer of protection. There are several conditions that might lead a patient to consider a PLIF. Among them is a disc herniation. The discs of cartilage between our vertebrae are constantly supporting our entire body weight. Over time, this pressure can result in one of these discs being forced out of place and into the spinal canal. As it continues to bulge, this disc may press against a spinal nerve and cause leg pain. During a PLIF, the surgeon will remove the entire herniated disc and then use rods and a cage to provide structure to the spinal cord. Spondylolisthesis can also be addressed with a PLIF. Spondylolisthesis is characterized by the displacement of a certain vertebrae in relation to the vertebrae below it. Patients with this diagnosis often experience significant back and leg pain. Degenerative disc disease can also be treated with a PLIF. Patients with this condition experience the thinning and degeneration of cartilage in between their vertebrae. This often results in pain in the back, buttocks, or thighs, especially while walking. Once again, a PLIF provides structure and support for the vertebral column. The procedure is done with the patient lying on his or her stomach. A vertical incision is made at the site of the spinal cord impingement. Surrounding muscles are held aside to gain access to the laminae. A drill is used to remove the bone that surrounds the obstructed portion of the spinal cord. If the patient is suffering from a herniated disc, we target its specific location. With a device very similar to that seen here, we remove the entirety of the herniated disc. This process is known as a discectomy. We then restructure the spinal canal using a fusion process. This begins by drilling into the bone and is done very carefully so as not to disturb any surrounding structures. We then place a fusion cage, which will help the fusion of the vertebrae to progress quickly. Small pieces of bone collected during the procedure are then placed around the cage to further aid the fusion. Rods and screws are added to structure the spinal cord during this healing process. Over time, the cage and these pieces of bone will fuse with the vertebrae above and below the site of the discectomy. By promoting the fusion or joining of these vertebrae, the patient is able to regain mobility and flexibility in his or her back. The surgery will last between three and six hours, depending on the number of vertebrae to be fused. Patients generally stay in the hospital for one to two days after their surgery. Exercise is encouraged one to two weeks after surgery. It is best to start with walking and to avoid any twisting or bending. Patients can expect to wear a back brace for up to six weeks after their procedure. Hopefully, this will give you a better understanding of a posterior lumbar interbody fusion. The procedure is safe and very effective. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to ask.